In this video we're going to look at multiplying radical expressions and um, we've done a, a little bit of multiplying radical expressions with some basic uh, monomial type expressions by using this rule. The square root of a times the square root of b equals the square root of ab. So if you have something simple like the square root of 2 times the square root of 3, that's simply the square root of 6. And you may have just gotten done with adding and subtracting radical expressions. If I, if I had square root of 2 plus the square root of 3, those are not like terms, so I can't add those together. I would just be done. Um, but if they're if it's multiplying, you can just multiply them together. It's similar to working with exponents. Uh, if I had, let's say I had x squared times, oh, how about x, y to the third? I, those are not like terms, but I'm multiplying, so I can multiply it together. I would just get x to the third, y to the third. I would multiply the x squared times the x. But if I had x squared plus x, y to the third, I cannot add those together. They're not like terms. I can't combine them. So multiplying is pretty straightforward. They don't have to be like terms. You just multiply them together. If you have something that's outside of the radical, you would multiply those together. Um, so say you had 7 square roots of 2 times 8 square roots of 5. You would just multiply the two things on the outside and get 56 and multiply the two things on the inside and get square root 10. Now why is that? Well, remember 7 radical 2 means 7 times the square root of 2. And then we're multiplying that by 8 times the square root of 5. So this business over here is just a bunch of stuff multiplied together. 7 times square root 2 times 8 times square root 5. When you have a bunch of stuff that's multiplied, you can switch the order. That's the commutative property. Commutative. So I could switch that 8 and that root 2. So now I have the 7 and the 8 next to each other, and the square root 2 times the square root 5, which by this rule is just square root 10, and there you go. That's why. But you don't have to go through all that to get the right answer. You just multiply the 7 times the 8 to get the numbers on the outside of the radical, and the 2 times the 5 to get the numbers on the inside. That's always kind of good to know why. All right, so let's step it up a notch here. That was pretty straightforward. Let's say we have a, a binomial times a binomial. So let's say we have uh, 4 plus 2 square root 3 times 6 plus 8 square root 3. If so we have a binomial times a binomial, we're going to approach this the exact same way we would do any binomial times a binomial, which some of you may have learned as FOIL and others of you uh, maybe learned as just distributive property, which are the same thing. So I'm going to take the 4 times each of the two terms in the second parentheses. And for you FOIL lovers, this is the first two terms in each parenthesis and the outside two terms in our uh, binomials. 4 times 6 is 24. And 4 times 8 square root 3, the 4 and the 8 are both outside of the square root, so we multiply those together, we get 32. And then there's no other square root to multiply with the 3, so we just get square root 3. Now we're going to take the 2 square root 3 and multiply it by both terms in the second binomial. And this is i for the inside two terms and l for the last two terms in each parenthesis. 2 square root 3 times 6, 2 times 6 is 12, and I just have a square root of 3, because it's not nothing to multiply that by. Now I have to do 2 square root 3 plus 8 square root 3. I'm going to multiply the numbers on the outside, 2 times 8 is 16, and then I'm going to multiply the numbers on the inside of the radical square root 3 times square root 3. So 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, so now we have some simplifying to do. We've got four terms. You need to look for two things. Do you have any like terms? Or do you have anything underneath your radical that you can simplify? Well, it looks like this square root 9 here could definitely be simplified. These square root 3's cannot be simplified, but the terms 
could be combined. We have a 32 radical 3 plus a 12 radical 3. We can combine those. All right, so I'm just going to bring the 24 down. And I'm going to go ahead and combine these two terms together. 32 plus 12 is 44 square root 3. Remember, you're just combining like terms. This is like 32x plus 12x is 44x. You don't change this square root 3. Keep that the same. And for my last term, I have 16 times the square root of 9, which is 3. All right, so 16 times 3 is 48. Now I can combine the 24 and the 48 together. And that gives me 72. 60 and 12 is 72. And then bring down the 44 square root 3. And there you go. Looks like we're using a lot of the skills that we've learned before. Foil, multiplying um, two monomial radicals, and combining like terms, simplifying radical expressions. So there's a lot of previous knowledge being put to work here. A little shortcut I want to show you, which some of you may know. Right here, instead of writing the square root of 9, I would have just written a 3. And here's why. What we were doing there was we were taking the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, and that is going to be 3. So let's write that down. If you have the square root of a times the square root of a, and so this only works if it's the same exact number underneath the, the square root sign. It's always just going to be a. Why is that? Well, the square root of a times the square root of a would be the square root of a squared. What is the square root of a squared? What times itself is a squared? Well, that is a. So anytime you see square root 5 times square root 5, save yourself a step. You could take the step and write square root 25, but that's just going to come out to be 5. Because basically what you're doing is the square root of 25 squared, or excuse me, the square root of 5 squared, and the square root and the squared undo each other, right? So you just end up with 5. Okay, let's have you guys try one here and see, oopsie, and see how you do. Lots of previous knowledge, like I said, being used here. We'll keep that rule up there. Let's try this one. Um, 6 square root 2 plus 8 square root 3 times square root 2 minus 5 square root 3. So you might want to pause it and give that a try. All right, let's start our foiling. 6 square root 2 times the square root of 2. All right, I don't, all I have out here is a 1. You can write that in there if you want. So 6 times 1 is just 6. Now let's use our shortcut. We're going to do square root 2 times square root 2. The square root 2 times the square root of 2 is just 2. You could write square root 4 if you want, but it's just going to be 2. So that's what you get for the first one. Outside, 6 square root 2 times 5 square root 3. 6 times 5 is 30. Square root 2 times square root 3 is square root 6. All right, so far so good. Inside, 8 times 1 is 8. Oh, I messed up, didn't I? Did you see it? All right, I'll finish this, and then I'll go back. Hopefully you saw it. I'm just testing you. Square root 3 times square root 2 is square root of 6. Okay, on this last term, where did I mess up? Did you catch it? 6 square root 2 times 5 square root 3, but we have a minus right there. So it's a positive 6 and times a minus 5 square root 3. So this should be a minus. Are you buying? I was just testing you to see if you guys are staying awake. Okay. It's not making the mistake. It's catching the mistake, right? All right, here we go. Last one. We have 8 square root 3 times a minus 5 square root 3. So we have an, a positive 8 times a, a negative 5. That gives you a negative 40. So I'm going to write minus 40. And then we have square root 3 times square root 3, which is, by our shortcut, square root 3 times square root 3 is 
3. Good. Square root 3 times square root 3 is square root 9, which is just 3. So I'm going to put times 3. No square root there. Just plain old, simple. I knew it when I was in grade school. 3. All right, here we go. Let's do some simplifying. We could do the 6 times the 2 and get 12. I have some like terms here in the middle. I've got negative 30 square root 6 plus 8 square root 6. Negative 30 plus 8 is going to be a negative 22 square root 6 minus 40 times 3 is 120. Well, we can combine these uh, terms together that don't have any roots in them. 12 take away 120 is going to be negative 108 minus, bring down the 22 square root 6. I have two terms here. I can't combine them any further. This 6 cannot be simplified, so I am done. All right, well, hopefully that gives you a nice little introduction to working with um, multiplying radical expressions. Again, you're going to use a lot of the same skills you did before. If it's two binomials, multiply it just like you multiplied two binomials, and then use your previous knowledge of working with radicals.